welcome back. Thanks a lot for staying with us. You're watching Tech Trends. Is it a bubble or is it the future of investment? That debate carried well into 2022 as well in the space of cryptocurrencies. Crypto daily trading volumes plunged almost 50% in 2022 following the collapse of FTX. The fallout of SPF once $32 billion empire is weighing on the investor sentiment. Although crypto crashes are not something new in the domain of digital assets, this year the collapse of crypto exchanges itself has been a red flag. The war in Ukraine, inflationary fears, higher interest rates and volatility of cryptocurrencies has led to the crypto market having its worst fears come true. The fall of FTX Binance, which happened to be one of the major crypto exchanges, has once again raised questions about sustainability. For India specifically, crypto has been a grey area. The government has neither banned it nor legalised it. There are 100 million crypto investors in India, with Indians having invested upwards of $10 billion. The Indian government hasn't been very optimistic of crypto prospects. Despite a clamour for legalisation, there is currently no law for or against crypto. The bill, despite being listed multiple times in Parliament, hasn't been tabled, though the government has levied 30% tax on transactions and 1% TDS for crypto users. The government feels crypto investor numbers in India are exaggerated and the RBI has termed crypto as a clear danger. But with global crypto recognition and legalisation, can India be far behind? So Ajit, this time around, let me kickstart the conversation with you and thank you for patiently waiting. Let's first begin with the recap. How did you see 2022 for crypto? So, year started strong, then all the headwinds started. For India specifically, it was a regulatory action in the budget, which uh, sounded the death knell. Uh, but globally also the bear, bear market, the Terra Luna crash and eventually the FTX crash uh, defined how the year is going to be. Right. As you said, the FTX crash, that of course became a big red flag as far as the crypto industry is concerned. How big a setback was it? Very interestingly, the nature of the setback of FTX was not extraordinary. By that I mean, dozens of such things have happened over the last few years. However, the magnitude of what happened this time around was very big, primarily because FTX was very big, as well as the market was very big. Because of that, yes, there is a setback, and the setback may come in two ways. One is in a sentimental setback, and second is because the regulators might take a very harsh view on this entire space now. But you know, because of this crash, Ajit, you know, crypto once again, according to many, has moved into a grey zone. What are our learnings from crashes like these? The learnings, are, I think, for different parties are different. For uh, investors, who probably are the worst affected in this case, the learnings are, number one, that while you are trying to denounce one way of working, which is a centralized way of working, and hence saying that the blockchain, crypto, Web3 paradigm is superior, on the other hand, you have moved from one set of overlords to another set of overlords, which means one form of centralization to another form of centralization. I think the learning is that our first step has not worked very well. The overall idea remains good. Hence, let's take a better second step. So when you say let's take a better second step, I'm understanding in terms of specifics because of the crash that we saw and the impact that we saw on various cryptos, is there anything called a quote-unquote stable coin anymore? So, you know, stable coins have been stable for two reasons. <laughs> Algorithmic stable coin and that is where Terra Luna crashed and uh, then there are the asset-backed stable coin where no major crash has occurred but we are always suspecting that what if pretty much like the exchanges were not rightly capitalized, what if the stable coins are not adequately stabilized? Now, here is the point. After the Terra Luna crash, the US regulators took their sights away from regulating crypto to narrowly trying to regulate stable coins. And there's already a bill in the US Congress yeah. for that effect. I think that stable coins 
require far greater trust than speculative asset type of cryptocurrencies and US will be the first major market to regulate stable coins as soon as the next few months. Ajit, I want to talk to you specifically about India. We've always seen the government's position being slightly pessimistic. But this year, we did see the testing of the CBDC. Do you think there is a more optimistic intent this time around? So CBDCs, while they run on the same technologies as the rest of the cryptocurrencies, serve a very different purpose. Nobody invests in the rup Indian rupee hoping that one Indian rupee will be worth more than one Indian rupee. So CBDC is most welcome. In its present form, it does not do much more yeah. than what UPI could do. However, as a first step, it is welcome and future steps will be still more welcome. I think what the CBDCs will do to the crypto world will actually at the very least legitimize the underlying technology and the peer-to-peer -peer transfer of assets. Okay, so I also want to understand, looking forward to 2023 now, are you optimistic that maybe this year at least uh, India will see a law or some sort of legalization? I have not seen any, as in other than a law which was authored in early or mid-18 and then was going to be tabled in parliament number, a few number of times. Yeah. I have not seen any inclination by lawmakers to actually do this and that is primarily coming from the fact that Reserve Bank of India, uh, which of course is one of the most reputed and responsible regulators in India, has seems to have a different view than the rest of the finance ministry. As a result, we have not come to any consensus even amongst the government, leave alone industry yeah. participants or investors, we have not come to any consensus about what the contours of such law should be. So I expect that in India, Pretty much like we tweaked the Income Tax Act okay. and used that as a beginning baby step towards regulation, we may see more tweaks to existing acts. Well, we'll have to see and only time will tell. Ajit Pranjal and Nikhil, I'll request you to stay on with us because now we want to shift our focus to the last trend that we're covering as far as this special is concerned. And this wasn't unfortunate, but many saying this was a reality that we have to brace ourselves with. Now, it was being seen as the after effects of overhiring during and post COVID. Several companies doubled their sizes, including some small tech firms that hired crazily because the world was going towards digitization. But as operations opened up, companies realized that their staff and their budgets were a mismatch, resulting in mass layoffs. Just in the last two months of 2022, a slew of US multinational companies, including tech giants, Amazon, Meta, Twitter and others, announced massive layoffs. According to a global placement and coaching firm, layoffs crossed 60,000 in September and October combined in 2022. Alphabet CEO Sundar Pichai had warned of a coming winter in the tech sector earlier in 2022. The IMF has also cited forecasts for global GDP growth in both 2022 and 2023 as gloomy given the pandemic and the ongoing war. Setting aside the 2008 financial crisis numbers, estimates for this calendar and the next by the IMF are the weakest since 2001. So is the worst yet to come. Massive layoffs by tech companies in 2022 alone have surpassed the levels from the Great Recession of 2008-2009. Led by companies like Meta, Amazon, Twitter, Microsoft, tech layoffs are set to worsen in 2023 amid ongoing global macroeconomic conditions. As of mid-November 2022, more than 73,000 workers in the US tech sector had lost their jobs. In India, over 17,000 tech employees have been shown the door as well. Employers realized that post-COVID workforce requirement had changed, budgets had been slashed. Growth indicators looked grim and decision by the Fed and a looming recession is weighing on employers. As we move towards 2023, can the trend be reversed? Nikhil, I want to bring you back in the conversation. Uh, many said that this was one of the worst layoffs that we had seen both globally and in India. Would you say this was coming considering the fact the pandemic, of course, had messed up the algorithm that organizations were working with? That way. And uh, I don't think the problem is 
I don't think the issue has fully played out. Uh, it somehow feels like we're at the very beginning of a long drawn slowdown. Uh, internationally, America, for example, has seen us getting closer to a recession uh, than India. But in the global world that we live today, <clears throat> Everything is quite correlated, and if they are slowing down, we will probably slow down. Uh, so personally, I feel 2023 will be a lot worse uh, from an employment standpoint than 2022 has been. And with the cost of capital going up, a lot of these companies which have been laying off people will only find it harder to raise money in 2023, which could lead to further layoffs as well. So which sector specifically do you see bearing the brunt of these layoffs come 2023? I think everybody who's not turning a profit today is probably the lowest hanging fruit in a way. Uh, people will have to become leaner. Companies will have to become tighter in terms of uh, CAPEX, OPEX, in terms of how they operate. Yeah. Uh, so I would assume the ones which have the least runway uh, will be the ones which have the highest number of layoffs in 2023. So as we said, it possibly looks like that the worst is yet to come, but uh, you know, we'll request people to upscale because this is the time to also increase uh, what you can show as far as your CV is concerned. Unfortunately for us, we've come to an end as far as this special show is concerned. Nikhil Kamath, Pranjal Kamra, as well as Ajit Karana, always a pleasure speaking to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us on this very special show. And as I said, with that, it's a wrap from my side as well. Here's wishing all of you a very happy and prosperous 2023 till we meet next time it's a bye-bye